My neighbor gave me some charcoal from 1987, and I'm going to test it by grilling a steak on this and some charcoal from a brand new bag. And while the taste test will be interesting, I wanted to find out if there's any difference between charcoal made in 1987 versus what you could buy today. Because in 2006, Kingsford, they changed their formula and their design, said that it's going to be ready faster, burns longer, and produces less ash, and I'm going to test that. One of the big changes between the two bags is that the newer bags are 10% lighter, and they said that they would have the exact same number of briquettes in each bag, at least on average. In one of my previous experiments, I got 100 different charcoal briquettes from two different bags, and I weighed them, and they were almost identical in weight. Even though the individual charcoal briquettes varied in size pretty significantly, when you took the average of 100 of them, they were about the same. So I did something pretty similar with the new and old charcoal. I weighed 50 charcoal briquettes, and I found that the old ones are about 20% heavier, which is a bigger difference than the 10% that they change the size of the bags. Some people guess that the difference is because they're putting more wood char in the newer ones, which is lighter, and therefore takes up just a little bit more space. But that would also mean that they're reducing the number of additives and other things that they're putting in that charcoal briquette. In order to test which one was ready faster, I put 20 briquettes of each in a pie tin. Not only did they change the formula, but they also changed the shape of the briquette since 1987. The older ones are completely smooth on both sides, but the newer ones have a big K on one side. If you flip it over, the other side has two parallel ridges. They say that produces more airflow, and it also has more surface area, so that way it lights faster. Oddly enough though, that is not what happened in my test. The 1987 charcoal produced a ton of white smoke in the beginning, but it cleared up long before the new charcoal did and would have been ready to cook much sooner. It got up to temperature faster as well, which was a surprise to me because it goes against the marketing claims that they had made. But of course, that could be just because of the way I did the test. So in this test, the new charcoal is hotter and it's ready to go, except for the smoke. It's still producing a lot more white smoke, and as you can see, the old one isn't producing any at all. You might be wondering if the newer charcoal burned longer, and I actually fell asleep before I could complete that test. But really, it wouldn't have been a fair fight because the older charcoal had 20% more mass, which would give it a huge advantage. For me, the time that it takes to be able to burn isn't nearly as important as how good it cooks and the quality of the food you get off of it. So let's look at their third claim, which one produces more ash? So once again, I'm pretty surprised by the results. After weighing both the new and the old ash, there's only a difference of five grams between each of the two. That would mean that the new charcoal does in fact produce less ash than the old one, unless you consider that you started with 100 grams more charcoal with the old charcoal than you did with the new. So that would mean that the new charcoal actually produces more ash gram for gram than the old stuff did. But when you compare the volume of the two, the old one definitely had more ash to that respect. The new one was more compact and heavier than the other one. Just an interesting result. But with that, I really want to get in and actually cook with this stuff, and that's why I'm going to grill some New York strip steaks. I'm not going to get real scientific with a cook in measuring out the exact amount of charcoal between each one. I'm just going to pretend like I'm cooking them in my backyard like I normally would, which is I'm going to pour some charcoal into each one and then sear it until they're medium rare. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and click that button because for every subscriber we get in July 2022, we're going to donate five cents to Operation Barbecue Relief so that way we can share the barbecue love to people in need. All right, all right. Both of these are done. Let's go ahead and cut into these and I bet that one of these is just a little bit over or a lot over. And medium steak never hurt anybody. So these steaks actually turned out more like medium well. I was busy trying to get a thumbnail and other things and I lost track of what I was doing, but I think it'll still be a pretty good steak. So let's go ahead and try the new charcoal. So that one's really good. It's everything that I would expect out of a steak cooked over charcoal. It was tender and had just a little bit of smoke flavor. Aside from the cook, it was just about perfect. But now I wanna try the old one, 1987 charcoal. So I hate to say it, but I think the charcoal from 1987 produced a better steak and had a little bit more smoke flavor and a better flavor overall, but I gotta get a second opinion. Try the two pieces of steak. Number one, number two. So Mrs. GTE disagreed with me and said that the steak cooked on newer charcoal tasted just a little bit smokier, so maybe that's a matter of preference. 
but it is true that the newer ones burn a little bit hotter and they get ready faster than the old ones. But to me, I like that flavor of the old original ones just a little bit better than the newer style. Have you tried either one of them? Let me know down in the comments below.